Hello, this is a PowerPoint presentation about Varroa and the authorised Varroa sites that can be used to control it. Varroa has a significant impact on bees and beekeeping. The entire life cycle of the Varroa mite takes place within the beehive. It consists of a phretic stage where the mite feeds and is transported around on adult bees and a reproductive stage inside sealed brood cells. These are the life stages of the Varroa mite. Varroa feed on the fat bodies of the bees by making punctures through the body wall with their sharp mouth parts. Mites prefer nurse bees. During the summer, mites live for two to three months and readily transfer from bee to bee and brood cell to brood cell. In winter, mites live much longer and overwinter on adult bees within the cluster until re-entering the brood the following spring. Feeding other mites can weaken and damage bees and brood. To breed, an adult female mite enters a brood cell just prior to capping, where she remains in the brood food under the larva until the cell is sealed. Mites prefer drone brood, but will also breed in worker brood. Four hours after capping, the female mite begins to feed off the developing bee and establishes a feeding site for her offspring. 60 to 70 hours after capping, the female lays the first of her eggs. Each female mite lays five to six eggs, the first always being a male egg followed by four to five female eggs laid at regular 30 hour intervals. The male hatches first followed by the females. The male mite then mates with the female offspring within the cell. Development of the mite is through two juvenile stages, the protonymph and deuteronymph, then becoming an adult. Time from egg to adult for males is five to six days and for females, six to seven days. The duration of each reproductive cycle is limited by the development time of the bee. So more mites are produced in drone brood than in worker brood. Not all females reach maturity and mate by the time the bee emerges from the cell. Mature female mites leave the cell with the emerging bee. Immature females and the males do not survive outside the cell. In the left hand photo, it shows varroa mites on the underside of the abdomen of a worker bee. In the right hand photo, it shows a newly emerged worker with varroa mites on her and other varroa mites emerging from the newly vacated cell. This looks like a heavily infected colony. This slide shows the comparative size of a mite if its host was the size of a human. As well as feeding on the fat bodies of the honeybee, the varroa acts as a vector for viruses, which shortens the life of the bee. The most commonly seen virus is deformed wing virus. These photos show newly emerged bees that have been affected by the virus. This is a photo of parasitic mite syndrome. High levels of virus have caused the young bees to die before they've emerged from their cells, many with their proboscis extended. This colony is on the brink of collapse. These are some of the other viruses that are associated with the varroa mite. It is virtually impossible to eliminate all varroa mites from a colony. However, by using various physical techniques and treatments, mite populations can be kept at a level where they do not cause serious damage. Looking at the research available, the National Bee Unit has set this at approximately a thousand mites. 
This is known as the economic injury level. In agriculture, a term known as integrated pest management is used where pest levels are controlled by using a combination of physical techniques and chemical treatments. By monitoring the natural mite drop from a colony, it is possible to determine the mite population and the appropriate control necessary to keep the mite levels below the economic injury level. One of the easiest ways to monitor mite drop is to use an open mesh floor. By placing the tray below the floor and monitoring the mite drop over seven days, it is possible to determine the natural daily mite drop. Using this graph, one can then determine what varroa controls are necessary to keep the colony healthy. Mite levels should be checked regularly. The National Bee Unit recommend checking at least four times a year. This graph and further information is in the National Bee Unit Managing Varroa Advisory Leaflet. This photograph shows varroa mites parasitizing drone pupa. Using an uncapping fork to uncap drone brood in the purple eye stage of their development can be used to assess mite levels in a colony. This is not as accurate as monitoring daily natural mite drop with an open mesh floor. Physical techniques can be used to reduce mite levels. These include use of open mesh floors, drone brood removal, comb trapping and the artificial swarm. These are known as biotechnical controls. Use of these controls is described in another National Bee Unit presentation, or you can refer to the Managing Varroa Advisory Leaflet. The photograph in this slide shows drone brood removal. A super frame has been placed in the brood chamber at the edge of the brood nest, and the bees have produced drone brood at the bottom of the frame. This can be cut off with a hive tool when mite levels are increasing. The comb can then be placed in a cellar extractor or frozen to kill the varroa mites in the cells. An important time for a colony is in the late summer and early autumn, when the colony is reducing in size but producing the young bees that will take it through the winter months. It is crucial that at this time the colony has a minimal amount of varroa so that the winter bees are healthy. If the winter bees have been parasitized or infected with virus, it will shorten their life, which may cause dwindling and death of the colony. There will be occasions when mite levels have become high and it is necessary to apply a chemical treatment known as a varroicide to reduce the mite numbers in the colony. Bees are food producing animals, therefore it is a requirement that any product used to treat or prevent disease is approved by the Veterinary Medicines Directorate. When the VMD approve a product, it is rigorously tested. They check to see that nothing harmful will get into the food chain. They also test to ensure that it is not harmful to the bees, to the user or for the environment. Only approved products should be used to treat bees. At the time of producing this presentation, there are 15 approved varroicides available to be used in the UK. Some of the products use similar chemicals to kill the varroa mites. On this slide, I've grouped the products by color those products that are written in the same colour use similar or the same chem chemicals in them. The top three products in blue on the list, Apistan, Vaverol and Polyvar Yellow, all use synthetic pyrethroids. The next two products in orange, Apitraz 500 and Apivar, use a chemical called Amitraz. Below this in green are Apigard, Apilifevar and Thymavar. These products predominantly use thymol. 
In red are MitreWay Quick Strips, known as Max and Formic Pro. These products use formic acid. In purple are Afibioxal, Oxyvar, OxyB, and Danny's Bionen Wool Powder. These all use oxalic acid dihydrate. At the bottom in grey is Varamed, which uses a combination of oxalic acid, formic acid, and has various other ingredients. These treatments all have advantages and disadvantages. Some of them are temperature dependent, and most of them cannot be used if there's a honey crop on the hives. By following the manufacturer's instructions, you reduce the risk of harming yourself and your bees. All hives in the apiary should be treated at the same time to avoid reinfestation. In the right hand photo is Bavarel being used. In the left hand photo is Apistan. When using products that use a plastic impregnated strip to deliver the treatment, it is important that the strip is suspended between the brood frames in such a way that the bees can come in contact with both sides of it. This improves the delivery of the treatment. Polyvar yellow is effectively a plastic mouse guard which is impregnated with a chemical plamethrin. When bees enter or leave the hive, they come into contact with the treatment, which kills the varroa mites. This is Apigard being used. A foil tray holds the thymol gel. With this product, an eek needs to be used to accommodate the tray and allow the bees to access the gel. Apilifar comes in the form of a thin green vermiculite tablet, which contains in the main thymol, but also has the other essential oils of camphor, eucalyptus and menthol. This is a hive of bees being treated with thymovar. It comes in the form of a thin yellow cellulose sponge, which is impregnated with thymol. Max consists of pads containing formic acid, which are covered in a special material that regulates the release rate of the formic acid into the hive. At the moment, they are the only treatment that can be used with honey supers on the hive. Max are a seven day treatment. The reason that Max have a treatment time which is shorter than many other products is that it not only targets the varroa mites on the bees, but also kills the mites that are in the sealed brood cells. Most of the oxalic acid dihydrate treatments are applied to the hive in a warmed sugar solution using a syringe. The solution is trickled onto the bees along the space between the tops of the frames. Because the treatment only kills mites that are in, on the bees, it is best to use when the colony is broodless so that no mites that are in brood cells are left untreated. This is particularly useful as a winter treatment when there is a minimal amount of brood in the hives. It can also be very effective when applied to new swarms before they have any sealed brood. Because apibioxal comes as a powder, not only can it be applied in sugar solution to the hive using the trickle method, it can also be applied using sublimation. Sublimation is where a substance goes directly from a solid state to a gas usually when heat is applied to it. In the photo is a tool for sublimating oxalic acid dihydrate. A measured amount of powder is placed in the pan of the tool. The tool is then inserted into the hive entrance and sealed to prevent vapors from escaping. It is then connected to an appropriate power source, such as a battery, which heats up the pan to sublimate the product. It is extremely dangerous to inhale oxalic acid dihydrate vapors and an appropriate face mask should always be worn. This is one of the other approved oxalic dihydrate products which are available. Varamed is a solution which is applied to the bees by tr trickling the solution onto them. Varamed contains oxalic acid dihydrate, formic acid, and some other chemicals. 
It comes in a 555 milliliter bottle as shown in the photograph and also in a 15 milliliter sachet. Both Apivar and Apitraz 500 are plastic Amitraz impregnated strips which are suspended between the brood frames to deliver the treatment. It is important to rotate your varroa, varroa treatments. For example, one year you may want to use Apigard, which is a thymol based treatment, and the following year you could use Max, which uses formic acid. By doing this, it helps to reduce the risk of the varroa mite becoming resistant to one particular chemical. When using varroa sides, it's very important that the manufacturer's instructions are followed to prevent the chemicals used from getting into the honey and therefore into the food chain. The National Bee Unit carry out honey sampling on behalf of the Veterinary Medicine Directorate, who test it to ensure that honey is not contaminated. Because bees are food producing animals, it is obligatory that beekeepers keep veterinary medicine records of any products that have been applied to their hives. These should be kept for a minimum of five years. This is a good example of a veterinary medicine record that is on bee base. This can be downloaded or printed off for use by beekeepers. Thank you for listening. Before you go, this last slide provides information about the aims of the National Bee Unit. Visit our website at www.nationalbeeunit.com. Sign up to BeeBase if you're a beekeeper in England, Scotland or Wales. BeeBase supports the aims of the Healthy Bees Plan 2030, protecting and sustaining our national bee stocks. Add details of your bees and apiaries and support the MBU in protecting bee health. Your local bee inspector can provide comprehensive help and advice. Visit the contact section of our website 